So this is gonna sound a little crazy, but I am moving back into the van, even though it's not finished being built yet. It was supposed to be finished, but I have just gotten so sick this year, just so many different times, so many different hospital visits. As of right now, I'm currently recovering from pneumonia. I've had pneumonia the last week and a half, and today's actually the very first day I can even walk again, and I just don't have time to waste because I planned this Canadian road trip months ago. I bought tickets, very expensive tickets for different events. And so <laughs> we're going to Canada. <laughs> but because I've not only been very ill recently, but because I get ill very easily, I am going to step up the current non-build, van-build version I've been living in from Las Vegas. Living in Las Vegas in the empty van was it was awful. It was terrible. And I think that's part of why I was getting sick. I also had a mental health, like I just got really depressed living in the van. There was nothing in it. I had no way to really make food, to store food. I had just so many different issues. The bed gave me like serious back problems. It was so uncomfortable and it would just deflate and I'd end up like sleeping on the floor. And my back is still not right form from it. And I'm like in my twenties and I am having back problems. So today is, I'm, I'm just gonna go, basically I laid in bed for a week and a half with pneumonia and I went crazy and bought so many different things to upgrade the camper van. That way, I just wanna feel good, you know? This is gonna be an incredible road trip and I don't wanna be worried about how I'm living in the van or anything. So I went a little crazy and also, if you've been watching my channel, you're probably like, oh my God, the van is still empty. I've actually made a lot of progress and the build videos just aren't caught up yet. So I'll show you. I've been able to almost finish all the walls and ceiling plus the pre-wiring. Each of those still need some final touches like the ceiling sags because I need to find my nail gun because I didn't want to have a lot of visible screws in the finished product. But for the most part, I think I've made a lot of progress. Currently got the heater going if you can hear it in the background. It's the Van Life Tech heated floors. It's like the best there is. So even though it's unbuilt, do not worry. I will definitely be warm. So I think we should start with the refrigerator. This is the Dometic CFX 75. In Vegas, I lived off of a Bouge RV colorful fridge that was 23 quarts. So this fridge freezer is 53 liters larger. This will be what I use in my final van build as I'm trying to not buy anything for the setup that I won't be using long term in the finished build. I had the CFX 45 in my last camper van, but I really wanted a fridge and freezer this time, so I made a major upgrade. Major because this thing is huge and I can definitely tell the difference in the power draw. I don't think my last van's electrical system could have honestly handled this fridge. I'm very excited. <laughs> this is the fridge I've been wanting for so long. It cost me $1,000, so I'm out of breath, not because it's heavy, because I have pneumonia and every little thing <laughs> is exhausting for me. This is huge. This is gigantic. Okay, obviously I'm gonna have a full install video when I put this in the bench and make the full, this is gonna be huge for my bench in my van. No going back. <laughs> it didn't have any refunds, so this is it. This is our fridge. And I'll show how everything for this is wired in the wiring video. But for now, we're just gonna plug it in. For the fridge, I also got this shelf liner because I used to have the Dometic 45. This is this Dometic 75. And on both of them, there's just kind of like these ridges in the bottom and food is gonna spill in the fridge. Like you're driving, you're creating an earthquake for the fridge constantly. And so there was obviously sometimes like food would get on the bottom and it'd be very difficult and annoying to clean out. And I, I just wouldn't do it that often, that's gross. So I wanna be able to do it more often. So I got shelf liner to put on the bottom. That way I can just pull out the shelf liner, wash it in the sink, put it back in and it hopefully will be much easier. And it's super cute. It's got daisies on it, so. Hopefully it's gonna work out. Sometimes it's the little details that can make a big difference in everyday life living in a van. And I definitely feel better when everything in the van is clean and organized. And when it takes a crazy amount of effort to accomplish that, it sometimes doesn't happen. And I would say a messy van definitely contributed to some of my negative mental health in Vegas. So that's a big focus for me with all these upgrades. All right, the fridge is up and running. It is 
If you comment, you better go catch it. No. I know you thought it. I immediately thought it when I said it. Um, and it is getting up to temperature, which is great, which means hopefully after I finish all this, I can go to the grocery store and get some good food. I really want to eat healthy on this trip because of how my body's feeling, which is why I also got a microwave for the van, which right now I don't know where I'm going to put it, but later it will be in the upper cabinets. This microwave was $100 from Amazon. It's 0.7 cubic feet, so an ideal size to fit in my upper cabinets, and it pulls 700 watts, which was the lowest power draw I could find in a good size. I've used it a few times now, and I like the buttons function, and it was so nice to be able to have full healthy dinners 10 times faster than pulling out a stove and cooking. I knew I was going to want to use power more for cooking in this fan build, so I went with a larger electrical system to accommodate that, and so far it's been holding up pretty well. So much of this video goes back to me wanting faster solutions to things. It's just that everything in van life takes more time. Showering, you have to drive to a gym. For mail, you have to drive to a post office or an Amazon locker. And so finding ways to save time where I can so I don't cut corners on important things like eating healthy meals or keeping my van clean can make a huge difference in how I feel day to day. Pretty cute. Okay, so now that we have a microwave and we have, oh my gosh, wait. One more thing. <laughs> Goodness, I forgot I... <coughs> I got a blender. This is a Nutribullet and it's 900 watts. So it's actually more watts than my microwave, but I really, 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 really wanted it. So I got it irresponsibly. Another thing that I got for literally like 60 cents. It's okay, first off, look how cute. There's a little cat. It's a little cat and it's got little paws. So cute. And they're little hooks and they go on the back of the seat. So now my shower bag, my purse, my, my towel after a shower can hang on there because right now everything that I'm doing, it all just has to sit on the floor because there's no upper shelves, nothing to really hold things up top. So I'm trying to maximize space with what I've got and yeah, I know I'm going a little crazy with getting every little thing. Um, so, so that's why, shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Jackery. And I'm obviously at this point, you're watching me add a microwave and a blender and a fridge and all these different devices. And you're probably thinking, how is she going to power all of that in a van? Jackery has actually just announced that they're now being launched and held in stores, which is a huge deal, especially with Black Friday coming up which means you're gonna be able to get really great Black Friday deals on these Jackery power stations. But what's really great about having them in person, there's so many different ways that people experience or wanna buy things. And I think being able to tangibly go in store, see it, feel it, actually be, a, you know, be able to touch a product before you buy it. You also aren't paying shipping prices. You're not waiting shipping times. So even if it comes down to you're in a power outage and you need a power device, you need a, you know, a power station right now, you can drive to the store and get a Jackery and have it right then, which is just, it's, it's going to be the game changing, I think. And I'm really excited that you're going to be able to, if you want to start van life, you can drive to the store, get power and start van life right now. So if you're anything like me and get easily distracted when walking through a Target by every shiny, weird, fun little thing, or when I walked in, I actually wasn't sure what section it would be in, home, electronics, outdoors. I didn't even need to ask anyone. I just found one of these fancy machines all over the store and put in the name Jackery and it told me exactly which aisle to go to, which helped me avoid being tempted to buy 90 other things on my way. You know how Target can be. And they currently have a Jackery 300 Plus in stock with portable solar panels, which is the one I actually already own. It's great because it has a LIFO4 battery chemistry and a long lifespan paired with 40 watt solar panels gives you maximum portability at only 11 pounds. Plus extra recharge options while not taking up too much space in your rig. Plus it comes with a five year warranty. They're currently having big Black Friday offers on that one, but I already own it. So I was actually looking for something even more small, easy, and portable. One I could carry in my purse because personally I own a lot of larger ones, also including the Jackery 1000 V2. Usually for $129, I got it for $89. So I'm sure Black Friday deals will be just as great. So if you're someone who likes Black Friday shopping, shopping in person, or needs something last minute, this is definitely a great option. But with that, now that I have a microwave and a blender and a 
huge refrigerator, I'm definitely going to have an influx of dishes. And I'm also, a big issue in my last van was brushing my teeth because I would have to like spit into a cup and it was annoying. I could never wash my face because I didn't have enough water or like a place to really wash my face. And so I'd break out more, which also partially came in because of the lack of airflow. So what I did originally, my first thought was I got this nine liter collapsible sink from Amazon. It was like $16. And I have one of those USB faucets. I was gonna have to set that, set that up with my water jug, but I have to empty this out like immediately whenever I use it. And it wasn't that good, right? Like this is a step up from using a cup, but it's not great. And because I'm being crazy on this one. I decided to step it up and get the best possible no build van build sink that's available. Super cool fun fact about this sink. It's a woman owned small business from near my hometown. And this whole idea started from a prototype she built in her garage for her two year old daughter. And she made and created numerous prototypes on her own over the years, learning to build from YouTube videos and using trial and error to help create a way to make washing up easier for her daughter and less of a hassle. And I think ironically, she's created a product that is perfect for van life. It's called Mighty Sink. Portable sink, mighty convenience. I originally found this on Amazon and immediately knew it was the best solution for a no build van build with practically no setup, but incredible ease of use. When you first open the box, there's about five minutes of putting pieces together. It also includes some really great accessories like this cutting board and a rain cover. So if you use it outside, it won't get filled with rainwater or dirty from things like leaves falling. I started by removing the top with the press of the two side buttons and removing the rest of the accessories. You can see here the divider for storing the clean and dirty water. And then the lid just clicks right back on and the silicone cover in the corner is for pouring clean water in with the sink cover on. Then I attached the USB charged sink pump and the side basket. It also came with two bottles for dish soap and hand soap, plus a drying rack for dishes that fits perfectly across the top. And that's it, that's the whole setup. The faucet charges by USB-C in the back and it came charged, which was super nice too, since I got started using this right away. Overall, I am super impressed with this sink so far, but we'll have to test it out tonight at the end of this video on my very first night sleeping back in the van. Genuinely, I am really excited about this. There is so much space in it. There's, it's just like having an actual sink in comparison to all the different steps I was gonna have to do to set up the collapsible sink and then set up the USB faucet. This is all of that, but automatically set up every single day for me. It has its own designated corner. Also, it's just adorable. It's just adorable. I'm very excited. <laughs> Like so much of what I was doing in the last van build, whatever my options were to create something, they were like trashy options. They were like throwing things together. This is a real, this is a real freaking sink we got going on here. In the last setup, I was kind of like tucking a blanket into the door so I could have some privacy or just get less light. I really made a list of all my problems. <laughs> I am tackling them one by one. I'm gonna show you a magic trick. This is how you turn a refrigerator into a table. Now I can sit here, I can put my food up here, I can cook up here, and I'll just feel like I have a space that I can, whether I'm putting my computer, honestly, I'll probably still use it as a bench. Hi. <laughs> um, but overall, I just really wanted a spot where I could sit and eat and not just be always eating in bed. I think a big part of feeling good and loving van life is feeling like you just have basic necessities and a table is one of those things. So I got a tablecloth. Also, this is like a brand new fridge and I want to keep it clean and nice. It was 
a thousand dollars. So it's also it's just to make the, the whole space look less like DIY thrown together van space. So it was like six dollar tablecloth and hopefully can make a big difference. We'll see. The next thing I did was set up my very first internet modem in the van. After four years, this is my very first time having internet besides my phone's hotspot. And this system is from Connectin and I'll have a full video of my setup and testing. But in Canada, I'll have limited internet from my phone provider internationally. So this is gonna be very important. All right, so while the Connectin finishes setting itself up, it's starting to get dark outside. We're losing daylight, so Oh, that blinks a lot in the video. It does not do that in real life. Okay, good, it stopped, I got scared. <laughs> I was like, is every video I ever make in the van gonna be like that? And watch this. <laughs> I know, I'm also exhilarated. <laughs> so before it gets too dark, I wanna do one more thing, which is put the bed in. And I got a new bed for this van, build, non-build, because the last one really hurt my back. So also it took up a lot of space. So I'm trying out this new thing to be able to save space and make the van feel less like the whole thing is a bed. Yeah. <laughs> Let's open this thing up because I really hope it's bigger than this box. I'm like a little scared to unzip this. I feel like it's gonna like <laughs> explode on me. Very anticlimactic. I hate it. Oh. I really hope this fluffs up a bit because this is just the floor. And then during the day, I'll have all the space again. All right, we are fully packed. We've got a seven hour road trip ahead of us and I'm very excited. I actually have space to walk back here this time. I made that. I also made this. That gives you a hint as to where I'm going. I'm also bringing this. So we've got so many exciting things to do. And yeah, it's time to get on the road. If anyone watched my video where I started off my road trip to Las Vegas, I started off with a giant bag of candy. Today, we have steak, broccoli, and rice. So, at the end of that road trip, when I got to the West Coast, I projectile vomited across the van. I have never in my life thought I was going to die as much as I thought I was going to die that day. Shout out to Angel, Master Chef, for making it. And I also have hot chocolate. And I, so I think this is fascinating. Um, this is my, this is my new Stanley Cup and I'm obsessed with it. And it took me a very long time to buy one because I felt like there would be a lot of stigma that they're like meant for high school girls. And I felt like I would be super judged. And there was a moment in my head where I realized I've worried more about being judged over this cup than I ever was worried about being judged for living in a van. And I am pretty sure I've been judged for one a lot more. <laughs> Look, there's freaking Taylor Swift on the top. Could I be happier? I don't think so. Life is freaking so great right now. We're fueled up. Let's get on the road. I forgot how much when you're driving and you actually have things in the back, you have to like take corners very gently. Otherwise you're gonna throw all your stuff. I, no
no hard braking. Like, you have to drive like a grandma. <laughs> Some things were definitely thrown around and I've only been driving for 30 minutes. However, even though the van's not done, I already feel the like sense of excitement when I come back to the van. And I'm like, mm, I'm, it's, it's just so exciting to live in your van. I don't, I don't know what it is. I love it and it makes me so excited to have like this huge adventure ahead of me. This first stop I'm making on this road trip brings van life full circle for me. It is the thing that inspired and started me in van life. So I'm very excited to, I, there's endless excitement. <laughs> into a Walmart to get everything set up for the night. I don't have my partition wall yet to be able to divide the cab area from the back area to be able to completely block out light. I will be putting up my window curtains. I just, being able to make a lot of noise, have the lights on, I'm doing that at the Walmart and then I'll go where I'm gonna sleep. That way I'm way more incognito and not making a scene. I also just like to get to where I'm gonna go to sleep and immediately go to sleep. There's like rules, there's like van life rules and these are just some of the things that I always try to follow. A big thing I definitely forgot to upgrade was a curtain in between here. Maybe if I'm like innovative, I could try to use this tapestry and be able to flip it back and forth that way whenever i need it i can close it off but yes yeah, so now i'm trying i'm gonna get changed for the night and i have i could put up my window covers but i'm gonna be here and then drive away and then so next time so before i left i filled the sink with water which actually took only a matter of seconds i just removed the cover and poured water in my first impression using the sink it pours faster than my other usb faucets and has so much more pressure before it wasn't enough for me to feel like it was actually cleaning my toothbrush but this is definitely sufficient so i am super happy with the water pressure also having a place to put all my face wash and my toothbrush to be ready at night made it just so much easier and faster. This was definitely more expensive than a collapsing sink, but it's gonna make a huge difference in my quality of life day to day in the van, and I have no regrets. When I take care of myself, I feel better and I have a better road trip, and that's worth every penny. My only issue is a common issue with any van sink, and it's just that the van isn't perfectly level, so it doesn't automatically drain all the water, but you know, welcome back to van life, I guess. So to find a place to park tonight, I turned to my trusty iOverlander app and just checked out all the local options. I ended up choosing a 24-hour Planet Fitness in a shopping center. It felt like a solid choice. I like shopping centers because I feel like if you park enough between stores, the stores never really know who you're with and they don't bother you, or at least that's my current working theory that I feel like it makes sense. I'm currently contemplating parking under the light which is more safe or parking back a spot because then i'm not in the direct vision of the people who work here who then see me sitting here for so long and then go that fan's been sitting here for a while so by parking a little bit further back i'm less obvious i'm less in the way they might wonder if i'm here for a different business but, you know, the closer you park a Planet Fitness, the more it seems like, oh, they're obviously in there. I overthink this. I don't know if you've ever, hi, I'm Tori, I overthink. <laughs> this is a 24 hour Planet Fitness, so I should be completely fine. There are no, no overnight parking signs. And I found it on iOverlander, so the odds are looking good. I have to get up very, very early tomorrow morning to finish my drive through Canada, cross the border, which I have never done before. I've never been out of the country before. And it's a lot to do. 
and I'm already exhausted. So I'm gonna get to sleep and I'll see you in the next vlog. Thank you so much for watching and I hope this was educational or helpful for someone who wants to get into van life or just learn how to get started real quick. So yeah, I'm so excited for tomorrow. It's gonna be a great day.